What's up YouTubes? Uh, so today uh, we're just gonna go for a quick jaunt over to a uh, more sheltered area to spend the night. Um, it's not the greatest of days out today. Uh, pretty cloudy as you might see here. And right here is Savory Island which I have yet to go on land. Um, as you might see be able to tell it doesn't look like there's a whole lot other than beach access uh, from this current spot that I'm in so I do kind of plan on sailing around and getting a look at the other side of the island here today uh, on the way to the next or to my spot for the night that I've got it's some marine park I don't recall the name it'll be flashing up on the screen here some point in time but uh pretty sure uh there's a decent breeze right now uh it'll be i'll be downwind but it's supposed to be shifting kind of all over the place and getting to be a pretty strong like 20 knot plus overnight so uh don't want to stay here or uh, the other side of savory is not recommended either so probably tomorrow uh during the day when it's supposed to be calm I'll uh, come back to Savory and do some exploring on land but uh, for today we're just gonna have a quick little jaunt uh, past land and uh, into a small little chain islands that uh, has a marine park so uh, gonna go ahead and get on the move here I'm kind of determined to leave this spot uh, under sail. Uh, I've never really attempted it in any kind of real wind before. I've done it on a calm day once, so I'm not exactly sure what the best method to do so is. Uh, it seems to me I would kind of want to get the main raised right now while I'm pointed into the wind, because I'm just going to be pulling myself windward with my as I pull the anchor up. So. Can't see that really hurting, but it very well could turn south quickly. I'm not too sure what's going to happen exactly, but we'll find out together, I guess. So far not going well. The lazy jacks are nice when I lower the main, but uh, they do become problematic raising. Bear with me. Things are uh, slowly getting <laughs> into position here. I really have no clue what will happen once I get the anchor up and uh, <laughs> what the wind will do when it gets hold of the sail. So this is going to be interesting. I'm pretty confident of that much anyways.
my main sheet out so As predicted, we did turn and start the heel. At least I have a vague idea of what's going on. Now I do need to sort out my anchor chain. I'll save you from this wind noise here and just kind of summarize what I learned here. Um, really, it went pretty smoothly and everything was kind of as expected um, after just editing this and just watching it over and over a few times. Um, it seems like the only thing I would do differently in the future is uh, just mainly uh, not have the boom, not slacking off the main sheet so much, uh, you know, while I'm pulling the majority of the road up. Um, I think it's probably best to uh, just uh, you know, get the, the chain fairly taut on the anchor and then establish a point to sail and actually just sail into the anchor, um, and then go and pull the rest of it up. Obviously it would make more sense, but like I said, this was a hundred percent experimental. I'd never even considered doing this up, up until this particular morning. I just made the decision that I was, you know, determined to leave off the sail and, uh, the one and only time I've ever done it previously was, uh, you know, pretty calm conditions and I just unfurled the Genoa and, you know, I picked up the anchor first of all, got it all stowed away and then just unfurled the Genoa and, you know, 
it until it had enough uh, it, enough uh, inertia to get pointed windward and get the main up and then off I went, right? Uh, the one big difference there is the wind was behind me rather than in front of me, so obviously with the wind being in front of me, I thought uh, it made sense to raise the main first here, and like I said, it seemed uh, it seemed to go well enough. Um, just the one just sort of major thing that was always on my mind is uh, if for whatever reason the wind shifts or the boat shifts, and that uh, main sheet is under tension while I'm up at the anchor. I mean, the boat is gonna quickly heel over drastically and uh, kind of round itself up, which would, uh, you know, not be a pleasant experience. But uh, so that was always on the back of my mind. But uh, like I said, I think, uh, you know, the only thing I would do differently, in fact, what I didn't mention before, but is making clear sense to me right now as I speak is, uh, to get that chain on the anchor taut before even raising the main would make absolute sense, I guess. That way I'm still in the cockpit and not, uh, you know, as concerned. I mean, it's not like my propeller is going to get tangled up on the chain if it's not spinning, right? So, yeah, I think uh, get the majority of the road up, get the anchor taut, and then, uh, you know, just establish a point of sail and start sailing and then go pick up the anchor usually I'm in 20 or 30 feet so if I've got it relatively taut you know that's just some chain that might hit my my keel at the absolute worst of things uh, I guess there is the off chance of kind of tangling up my rudder but I mean that's if we're calling it 30 feet of chain on a 28 foot boat I mean that's pretty tough to do uh, the water line is what 23 something nearly 24 feet so uh yeah I, I don't think that's really an issue so all in all I mean this experiment sort of proved to me that I can do it anyways and uh is now showing me a better method to try next time so uh we'll leave the voice over there So far so good, uh, we're moving along at around 4 knots right now, just the main so I don't think I'll bother with the Genoa unless uh, I get, <clears throat> depending on how sheltered I am once I head over towards Savory, which I think I'm far enough to do at this point in time. Doors definitely crashed there. Not the first time and won't be the last time that happened. Happens. And nothing major inside tipped over. A garbage can and some silverware. And I believe after that we gust, that'll, uh, we'll have a comm section here for, uh, likely for the next few minutes anyways. Good grief.
the wind is swirling at the moment. I do have to be careful standing up on the seat here to right in this position the boom will in fact hit me and most likely knock me off the boat which is not a good thing so uh, I will be paying close attention to that and here it comes and it's going right back uh, so basically in my first year of sailing I really shied away from downwind uh, so that's one thing I'm trying to do a lot more now uh, as far as I know it's definitely the harder point to sail um, from my experience it certainly is anyways uh, the advantage of pointing upwind uh, from my experience which is limited is uh, that you can always just go like if you if you feel things getting out of control you can obviously loosen your sheets or you can also just uh, point yourself straight into the wind and uh, literally just uh, let your sails uh, luff and kind of do nothing at all. So that was something that always kind of was a nice safety feature I guess for me being fairly new at this, uh, very new at it in fact. So like I said, we're trying to uh, get the new this downwind business this year because it is uh, quite a bit more efficient. I believe anyways, again, I don't have a whole whack of experience. I would kind of like to uh, strap my garbage can down since it has fallen twice now, but given that the wind keeps changing, and these wee gusts, I don't really feel too comfortable leaving the helm at this point. Uh, so Mr. Garbage Can can float around for a wee bit until we get... Uh, to said marine park that I still don't know the name of. <laughs> the wind vane on the top of my mast is like literally doing circles right now. Not too sure what's what the deal there is, but we are still moving, albeit slowly at the moment. As you can see, many boats on moorings out here, but everything I've read says uh, anchoring is not really ideal. Uh, definitely not tonight. The majority of the wind is going to be coming, uh, I believe, from west and northwest which would be make this awfully uncomfortable this is a pretty big detour from my intended destination <laughs> and surprisingly the wind is now coming off the bow which seems a little odd At least up high it is where my uh, my wind vane is located. The sail seems to think otherwise. Basically, this is how I learned. So y'all are figuring things out just as much as I am right at the moment. Uh, 
I know from my time spent in the Gulf Islands that wind does get pretty funky with it. When trees and <laughs> land masses get in the way. So not real surprising, but From here on, from here in, from here on, uh, from here on out in the voyage, uh, this is all new to me, waters and lands. So that part kind of keeps me motivated to keep on going and uh, exploring. Also means I have to pay a lot more attention to navionics and wind predictions and such. And this gentle little breeze is nice and relaxing for the time being, anyways. I'm not in any kind of hurry to be anywhere. Um, it's... What time is it? Uh, 3.45, so it's nearly low water, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was at 3.30 yesterday, so it should be around like 4 o'clock today, something like that. Uh, so I will be approaching the the anchorage that I'm intending to stay at at uh, relatively low water, which I like to do at uh, new spots. Typically they can be uh, deceiving as far as underground hazards that are not revealed at high water. At low water you do get a very more... Uh, clear picture of what's going on. There is a boat in the distance and it's really hard to tell if it's moving or not. Got to assume it is because I can't see why it'd be anchored there but supposedly in between uh, if the GoPro could see it uh, the end of Savory Island there and the next island over that I don't know the name of off the top of my head is uh, fairly shallow. I've read in one review that you can nearly walk across at low water, so yeah, he's definitely moving. Probably fishing, laying crab traps, something like that. One thing I've realized after uh, watching myself through YouTube uh, editing and such, I do end, uh, end or say, I say but a lot. I'm kind of half aware of it now, but at the same time it still kind of works out well in my vocabulary, so it's going to continue, I would have to expect. I guess during June and or July this would probably uh, be less of a ghost town. Haven't seen a whole lot of activity <laughs> on this side. There were a few people out having a fire last night when I pulled up to anchor on the south side of the island. But I can't really say that I see any sort of movement on the beach this day. It certainly looks like most of this a uh, little island is uh, uninhabited. Uh, directly left of me here is just trees and beach. can kind of analyze and learn from this kind of a poorly done job. Um, I think what would work better now having watched it is uh, 
I should have, uh, rather than started turning windward uh, right off the bat, I should have just uh, tightened the main sheet and kind of stayed straight downwind and then, uh, you know, slowly eased the sheet out as I turned towards windward. Uh, would have made that process quite a bit smoother, I'm pretty sure. So again, uh, watch and learn as I am doing and uh, we'll give that a whirl next time and it seems like it should work quite a bit better anyways. Okie dokie, so Mr. GoPro has in fact ran out of batteries, so I'll just show you guys the shambles that occurred here with my kind of uh, poor job of jibing there. So that's a little mess that's going to need taking care of. And in the meantime, we're still trucking along towards those, well, that little shoreline there. It's probably tough to make out, but I need to go in between that and the mainland, which is the larger kind of mountainous region there. Over on the starboard side, we've got mud. And of course, savory, which we just left. And uh, it is raining, uh, not terribly right at the minute, but uh, not exactly warm as I previously stated. So we'll try to fill in the gaps here with the iPhone. Uh, once I get close, or once I get to the point where I can go kind of straight down, in my pocket for a few minutes here and uh, get you turned back on once we're uh, going in the intended direction and here we are uh, almost going downwind through said channel uh, things did not go very smooth getting the main down uh, I definitely broke one of the clips on the sail. They're just little plastic boys that go in the track. I'll have to sort that out once I get anchored. So that uh, obviously one of them things that an autopilot would be good for or uh, another person on board. <clears throat> But we're nearly making our way just downwind. I don't have a whole lot of sail out up front. It's because uh, <clears throat> I'm not uh, exactly sure. I've never been in here before, obviously, so I don't know how narrow or whatever sort of landscape awaits me. <clears throat> and I will be paying more attention to Navionics as far as where I'm going. But, I mean, the plan basically worked out the way I envisioned it, other than uh, as soon as I got the main down and uh, climbed up to start pulling it down, uh, the wind got the bow of the boat and turned it 
basically 90 degrees so everything was the wind was blowing off the beam with the sail still kind of halfway up the mast so yanking it down at that point I kind of did some damage to it uh, so in hindsight I suppose if I would have had the motor running I probably could have lashed the steering wheel with something and at least kept it going windward the whole time and avoided that but I am really trying to not use the engine as much as possible <clears throat> so whatever I guess uh, we're gonna have to make some compromises in the future hopefully the sail is fixable um, I'm not sure I don't see it being a huge issue if it's I think it's just one clip broken and if I don't have any spares on board probably not the end of the world but again we'll have to figure these things out uh, a wee bit later on but we're trucking along here at <clears throat> well that speed three point whatever and basically I think we just need to go straight down in here It'd be nice if the GoPro batteries didn't die because uh, hands-free is a lot easier to film for myself and you would have saw me really struggling with the uh, main there probably would have been amusing I kind of think I'm gonna be turning left and going in that little region there but uh, <clears throat> not too sure just yet uh, no, <clears throat> apparently I will not be turning left, just right directly. As you can see, I'm sort of on course. So it looks like it'll be a left after island number two. Now we're still going three and a half, four knots. I could pick up a bit of speed if I let a lot more Genoa out. It's kind of more like a jib right at the moment. But I don't really see any uh, hurry at this point in time. Uh, the whole or my thought process here is <clears throat> the Genoa is awfully easy to furl in. So I can furl it in and then just keep whatever momentum I have and still maintain some control of steering. Um, I do anticipate turning on the motor for anchoring purposes. And I'm gonna put you away now because this rain is coming straight from behind now. <clears throat> and my GoPro, which is right meow, is uh, not waterproof. So it's probably a good time to get him <laughs> in, uh, in my pocket at least. So yeah, we'll check back in a wee bit. And there's now quite a bit more rain coming down, so we've closed the companionway just to keep the indoors dry. And as you can see, we are getting quite close to uh, our destination here. And still just flying this. Uh, this car I believe that's what they're called anyway, should be up further on the track, I do believe, but I'm not going to go through that effort right at this minute, because I am somewhat cold and getting wetter as, uh, as I progress here. So uh, yeah, we basically need to go right in that little gap, right meow. And as you can see, I'm kind of not pointed in the absolute right position at the minute, but that is fine and dandy because this is working with the wind, sort of, at the minute. I think once I point uh, into that channel, I'm going to have to get the Juno on the other side. So I'll put you away and see if that is <laughs> correct.
And as predicted, the Genoa has moved over. And we're roughly back on course. But I do need to uh, steer, so... Yeah, as you can see, it's a little bit of a tight entrance. I'm gonna not record it. And we're back. I just rolled the Genoa in. So I've got, well, two point, two and a half knots, I guess. The wind is still blowing the boat, which is fine and dandy. Uh, I've got steering, so. I mean, obviously there's shore lines kind of near me on either way, but it's plenty wide here and appears to have some decent depths, 58 feet. Uh, I'm hoping once I round this little corner here, this anchorage will make a little bit more sense. Uh, what is... Oh, come on. Uh, yeah. So yeah, once I get around that little corner there, which is meow, then we should be home free. Uh, if anything, I'll just have to start the engine and uh, reverse on the anchor just to get it set. But this was a pretty successful mission as far as... Uh, well, we left with the mainsail and we arrived with the Genoa sail, so motor free friendly. And I am slowing down just slightly, but I'm pretty sure I've got the momentum or inertia, whatever you want to call it, to get me around the corner to a spot where I can drop. Had I not spent a lot of time this morning editing, I could have came here in better weather. So be it. Uh, I'm a little bit uh, shivery at the moment. If you can see the camera shaking. Not too sure, but yeah, it's definitely not warm warm. Not freezing cold either, but... Yeah, we are starting to get into shallower water here. And what do we have? Anywhere in that region, that 6 to 16 feet will be good. Basically right on my present course here. some fishies below us. It's pretty standard in these little uh, coves. And I'm gonna say that over on the other side of this rock here would probably be the better anchorage. Uh, Navionics claimed that this was a good all-weather anchorage that I'm pulling into but uh, it's clearly not overly sheltered from this wind that's coming straight behind me at the minute. Well, like I said, the wind is going to change. Okay, so we do have the anchor down. Uh, the wind is blowing straight off the bow, for the time being anyways. So that leaves me with uh, kind of rocky doom behind me. But I do trust my anchor and also the wind will not be in this direction for much longer. Or shouldn't be anyways. Uh, for the time being though I'm gonna leave the key in the ignition and be uh, a little bit vigilant on making sure that I'm not getting any closer to said uh, rocky doom. But uh, yeah. too concerned at this point in time. I've definitely anchored in very similar situations many times in the past with no issues, so uh, this would be the marine park I would have to assume. Uh, sorry for the 
crappy camera views here, but uh, we do have this little no camping, no forest fires, whatever the heck that sign says. No tents and no fires by the looks of it. But I will have to uh, double check Navionics when I go inside to warm up because I'm pretty positive that the opposite side of this little island here would have been the better all weather anchorage. So maybe I did read something wrong. So uh, at this point in time, I'm a wee bit wet and uh, cold, so I'm going to go in and get warmed up. Oh, actually, I guess I could uh, quickly show you what broke here. This little fella right there, he uh, completely snapped. So no idea if I have a spare on board. That's going to require a lot of digging. But uh, we'll look for that obviously before I go anywhere else. And on that note, if you can see me, I would assume you can. Uh, we're going to leave you off there. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for some, I don't know, whatever comes next, I guess. <laughs>